All right, this is Adam. Now, I'm still with Edwin Yu, and there were a couple of other things that we wanted to take a look at and want to talk about that are kind of new. So let's uh, go ahead and, and you tell us about those. Okay, great. Two of the things that we're kind of showing here at the launch for the first time is both Hyper-V server and um, a sneak preview of some of the things in the next version of Hyper-V, which is going to be available in Windows Server 2008 R2. So we're back in the Virtual Machine Manager interface, and very quickly I wanted to show you this Hyper-V server. And if we take a look at the properties of the Hyper-V server, you'll see that it actually says Microsoft Hyper-V Server Service Pack 1. And what this is, is Microsoft Hyper-V Server is really our standalone hypervisor. It really doesn't have uh, the rest of Windows in it, so to speak. It just has the hypervisor. It's bare metal right on the surface. It's running Hyper-V technology, uh, but there's no other roles. You can't do anything else. It's really just for running virtualization. Okay. And this system really has to be remotely managed. It's really just a command line interface, what we're going to see. So in this case, I've got a bunch of VMs. In fact, I believe I've got four. Uh, I've got a couple SUSE VMs. Um, I've got a SQL VM. But these VMs are running on Hyper-V server. But if I actually remote into Hyper-V server, what we're going to do is we're going to switch over to that. Right, here we go. This is Hyper-V server. I mean, that's it. You log in. That's all you get. You get a command line interface here. Um, there's actually a command box in the background, so you can run standard commands. Um, but this is what you get. You get a little bit of this Hyper-V configuration where you can do some command line configurations. Uh, but other than that, if you want to create VMs or manage VMs, you really need to use the MMC or VMM to manage that. But what this does is it really gives you a very simple, very basic um, uh, hypervisor to start using for consolidation, maybe for branch offices, for other usage. Um, and this is something that we're going to announce uh, we have announced for availability a little bit later in the year, uh, and it's going to be uh, freely available uh, to all customers who want to go ahead and use this and get started with Hyper-V technology. Okay, so this is a more core server core, right? All it's going to do is hypervisor, though. I exactly. It's uh, similar to server core, um, but it it's not just server core, and you can go ahead and enable other roles. There's no other roles. All this does is Hyper-V. It's really uh, the standalone Hyper-V. It's not Windows with everything that it has in it. Um, but still, it has uh, updates and desktops and some of the things you would expect, enough to get the configuration up and running for virtualization. Okay, cool. Now, the other feature we've heard about is live migration. Tell us a little bit about that and how it differs from quick migration. So earlier we showed the feature um, vMotion from uh, VMware. What live migration is is a very similar thing. Uh, what happens is we still have a clustered host. Uh, in fact, here we're taking a look at the failover cluster manager. And the failover cluster manager here is actually running uh, Windows Server 2008 R2 Hyper-V. And I've got two nodes in that. I've got node 1 and node 2. And we'll kind of move over so you can see node 1 and node 2. And we've got this uh, VM that's running uh, video 1. So what happens is rather than actually writing the memory down, literally hibernating the VM and then moving it over, uh, what we do is we'll actually actively copy that memory over, and at the last second we'll do that switch over, and you'll get a seamless experience where the user really doesn't notice any perceptible downtime. Uh, so in that case, what we've done is I've actually connected to that VM, the VM itself, and there's some uh, Windows Media files there, and I've brought that up here in Windows Media Player. So we'll go ahead and play that. So as we run the video, what I'll do is I'll go back, and if I click on that VM, there's still move, and that's quick migration. But now I've got this option that says live migration. And as I hit live migration, we'll just take a look at the status and notice the current owner of the system. So if I go to live migrate, you see the migration's occurring. And right now we're on node 2, and it'll switch over to node 1. So it's actually doing that memory copy. And while we're doing that memory copy, the video is running. And boom, we've gone over to node 1 and the video hasn't changed, it's kept running. So we've actually switched it from node one, I'm uh, sorry, node two to node one. And we actually could go ahead and do that again. Cool. And it'll go ahead and do this. Live migration really covers some of the other things that quick migration does, and quick migration really suffices for many situations, but when you have the, the inability to really do anything uh, in terms of like system maintenance on a host and you really need to move the VMs off in order to do that, you can do that with live migration. Uh, you have systems that can't have zero downtime. Uh, live migration really opens up some additional options. And this is a new feature that we're bringing out, one of the big new features we're bringing out in Windows Server 2008 uh, R2 Hyper-V. All right, that was cool. Thanks, everyone. Great, thank you.